All right, there we oh, go. Very sit down. Climactic. Sit, sit down, Hello. Boy. That's right. That's right. Look at us. Look at us. We're here. Welcome, everybody. I? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, uh, episode 105. Yes. 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 The, ret- mm-hmm. the return of the in room experience. Yes. Between your boys. I have stream stuff. I should. So, shut up. <laughs> this is a beta test? No, yes. this is an alpha. This is an alpha. I mean, it's. It's applicable. All video games launch in some state of unfinishedness these days. And we are just being like video games. That's how dedicated we are to this medium. True. So uh, this is not really like the set. This is just like what it'll be. You know, we're just trying. We're trying things out. Mm-hmm. Just try, trying some things out. Working out some kinks right now. And, and the best way to work out kinks is do it live. Yep. So F it. That's yeah. what we're doing. Uh well it's good to see you here to see next you to too. next yeah. to my face yeah it's just nice. like I, old times in the old chairs yes uh these are the old chairs actually it has been I think oh it's been over three years yes twenty was it when I moved that we stopped doing them in person I think so yeah okay so well, now you moved back which now you know, we're we here used to do them in person. We could eat Oreos, and I brought oh, Oreos for the occasion. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, festive. Yes, yes. Snickerdoodle Oreos. Yeah, I figure, why not? I have not opened these yet. I have not tried them yet. We got to get, like, a top-down. We do. That'd yeah. be nice. Again, too fancy testing. for us. Wait, it doesn't have the traditional... It does. <laughs> I uh, forgot how to open Oreos. <laughs> Uh, it's a good thing I'm here now so I can hit him. Are these double stuffed? All the special ones are double stuffed. They're supposed to be at least. Oh yeah, no, they're thick. Look at how, look at how thick some of those are. This one's not that thick, but some of them are pretty thick. Yeah. These smell delicious. What are these? Is Snickerdoodles mm. new? Because these smell like something else. Do these smell like the cinnamon bun ones? No, well, Snickerdoodles are cinnamon cookies. Yeah. So, they probably got cinnamon in there. The cinnamon bun ones, the cream makes sense. Snickerdoodles, cream doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's well, why these are basically just the cinnamon bun ones. Right. For the festive name. And the best Oreos are the cinnamon bun ones. So these are good too. Yeah. Now I want to compare it to the cinnamon bun ones. Well, we're not going to go find the cinnamon bun ones. No, we'll find the cinnamon bun ones. Bob opens the Oreos like he's about to finish the case. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't think the podcast could get even better. Five seconds in, it's already way more fun having two. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I feel like it will be better. We'll probably talk over each other less. We'll probably... That's the biggest problem yeah. is knowing when the other person is about to say something because <laughs> there's a slight delay and it's slight enough where it sucks. It's a pain in the ass. Um, anyway, today, lots of things to talk about. Uh, the main topic we want to talk about is the Game War nominees. Yes. Uh, Jeff Keighley announced what games he thinks are going to be Game of the Year. And mm-hmm. we got we got something to say about it, don't we? Oh, sh- we sh- boy, howdy, do we. Uh, let's, I haven't gone through, I've gone through, I saw the Game of the Year. Yes. I didn't see the rest. Um, And I want to go through the rest, because the yeah. Game of the Year is the one that everybody's going to be talking about. Yeah. I want to go through all the other bullshit there are some there are some interesting nominee uh, nominations in each category. Um, a lot of repeats of you know what was in Game of the Year makes sense, but a lot of ones I have questions about though. Okay, we'll get into it. So I also want to mention uh, I I'm not going to be showing things on screen like I usually do because yeah. we're not we're it's not a work in yet. progress. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Um, but. I I looked at the game. So the first one is game of the year. Yeah. I'm going to do. I'm going to vote. Oh. I'm going to vote here. Live on air. With you. Do I, do I have to sign? Okay. I guess I got to sign yeah. in first. How do I sign in? Twitter? Do I want them to do that? I mean, unless you want to take the time to create a new account. Just use your Facebook. Oh, it's um, not like you use it anymore. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, sure. I'll authorize game awards to. Sure. Yep. Uh, I can. Okay. Game of the year. We got A Plague Tale Requiem. We got Elden Ring. We got God of War Ragnarok. We got F- Horizon Forbidden West. We got Stray. And we got Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I have played one of these games. <laughs> I've played none of them. Do you know which one I've played? Uh, Stray. Is it because you saw my tweet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, Stray, not 
nearly game of the year material. I that definitely feels like a this was popular for a hot minute. Let's nominate it to yeah. be, you know, to get some of that, you know, meme cred or whatever. It's because it's a cat and it's yeah. cute and it's and it's an interesting style. Mm-hmm. The game has nothing it, it, remarkable about the gameplay. Right. It's yeah. just it's a very boring game unless yeah. you're totally like unless you're totally wrapped up in the world which is a kind of cool world but the game's like four hours long yeah There's, and and the game doesn't pick up until like two or three hours in so it's it's <laughs> I, I can't imagine yeah. sitting in a room and saying this is the one that we're gonna put with god of war ragnarok yeah. you know um i did see a lot of people online say that the big surprise was that xenoblade chronicles 3 Got nominated for Game of the Year. I think that that makes sense, though. It does make sense. That was a huge deal well, and, it, and it, it rated very well. It does. But at the same time, you know, the Game Awards have often been, you know, derided for being, you know, much more focused on the, the typical mainstream AAA game, like, like your Call of Duties, your God of War. Is this not a mainstream AAA game? Well, it's a JRPG exclusive <gasps> to the Switch. How dare they? So that's that's like the big deal like you you normally wouldn't see a game like that mm-hmm. nominated for game of the year you'd see a mario or a zelda but not a not a xenoblade true it's a it's a little out of left field but it's yeah. still a very popular game no of course y- yeah. you're right it's a jrpg so it probably sold it's it's not very you know western yeah. audiences are gonna you know exactly. be all over it but it was pretty popular mm-hmm. and and i gotta be honest this year not a lot of hits nope <laughs> No, no, no. A lot of misses this year. Um, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon, I feel like, are the obvious choices for Game of the Year. Although God of War just came out. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> they, they've done this before where they'll nominate like a game that just came out mm-hmm. like, a, like a week or so previously, and they'll like have some BS excuse. I remember the biggest controversy was when Death Stranding came out. And then a week later, it got nominated for Game of the Year. And that yeah. one causes a lot of controversy because Jeff Keighley is in the game. Yes. That's a little bit of a conflict mm-hmm. of interest. Uh, God of War, I, you liked the last one, right? I liked the 2018 one, yeah. I thought it was just okay. And I was very jaded by uh, AAA games at the time. Yeah. I'll, I'm seeing a lot of criticism on Twitter uh, about this game because of all of the problems that i had with the previous game really a lot of the a, a lot of people are are not about the smoke and mirrors of triple a like game design anymore yeah especially you see a lot of memes of of uh the characters backseat gaming you like yelling at you yeah. saying you're not doing yeah. the right thing um and then some other quirky stuff like like the obvious like like puzzles that aren't really puzzles just yeah. go here and press x you know yeah Stuff like that, uh, and and that's knocking some points off of the game. Yeah, I do think it's a little ridiculous to put it in game of the year so soon. Yeah. Like they knew they were going to put it there no matter what. Yeah, I, it's not like they played it over the weekend and then were like, <laughs> "Nah, it's game of the yeah. year for sure." It's also a game I've seen get a lot of tens, like from a lot of publications. And I don't know. Do you feel this way sometimes? Like a website feels like they have to give a game a ten. Yes. Like, no, absolutely. And I feel I definitely feel like this is one of them. I, I raised Will a little bit. Let me know if the Yeah, because good. Yeah, the first one was good. I do think it's a little overrated, the first one, for like little reasons here and there. Right, right. Um but I feel like what could they have possibly have added to this to make it substantially better than the first one? You know? Yeah. I I, I think that there's definitely I mean, I feel like most credible games journalists are going to review a game and rate it whatever they personally think yeah. the game should be rated. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's also people who are afraid of backlash and they yeah. don't want to rate something too high if they if if they think that the general public thinks it's bad or vice versa. Yeah. They don't want to be the one to give a game a bad rating and ruin the Metacritic score. So that's always got to be in the back of people's heads. I'm sure it is, yeah. But any credible games journalist yeah. will... Not but at the same time, like do that. you don't want to rate a game too high, you don't want to rate a game too low. Like you don't get higher than a ten. Yeah. So like, and people still have this, you know, connotation that ten is a perfect game, and I know it's not, and I know websites have been trying to like hammer that home that it's not, but generally audiences still think that. 
because it's very rare that it, you, you, a game gets a 10. Not so much anymore. Fucking Pediment got a 10 from IGN this week. Pediment? Yeah, did you hear about that no, game? No, what the hell apparently is it's Apparently it's, po- like it's popular. I don't know if it's 10 out of 10 popular. It's a Game Pass game. I have an article about the Game Pass games that are coming out okay. this month. Um, from Obsidian. Apparently it's it's fun. But oh, Obs- Obsidian? Yeah. Okay. But IGN gave it a 10. <laughs> a lot of uh, the stigma of rating a game out of 10 is that it's like um, test scores. Yeah. Like for, like I view it like I did test scores. So if it's above a 65%, it's passing. <laughs> and under, it's failing. And yeah. it's, I guess it's different depending on where you grew up. Yeah. But for us here in New York, it was 65 and up was passing. 65 and lower was... Yeah. 64 and lower was failing. Uh, so if a game was a 64, I consider that a failure. Right. Uh, but that's not really how it is. Five is average. Yeah. So when well, a game gets a five out of 10, it feels like it failed. Five is supposed to be average. Right. But most, you know, in, you know, the modern video game review landscape, six or seven is average. Yeah. That's why most games get six or seven. Right. I do see a lot of sevens as average. Yeah. yeah. And then everything below that is just trash. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I saw Psycho Delirious in the chest. Do you think next time, Bob, you could put your mic on the other side so when you face Will to talk with him, you it'll pick you up better? Funny you should mention that. It's why we're late because uh, <laughs> I we're not going to have this. This is a temporary situation, this little like center console thing. We put both mics here and they kept hitting each other and, st- and there was nowhere to put it here where it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. So I had to get a separate mic stand. Uh, again, it's a work in progress. Beta test. Uh, anyway, I don't know who to vote for here. I didn't play. I only played one, and I didn't like it. Yeah. So I think Elden Ring is probably the clear winner here. I've, not, not that I think it would be my favorite, but I think that it's as far as a game goes, it's probably the best to to play. Yeah, all of these, and probably has the most you know different stuff that could that that's changing the way games are designed. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's gonna be it's definitely gonna get the runaway um, vote, like the fan vote, Mm -hmm. because like Elden Ring was the shit when it came out. It was like the biggest game. Um, Also, like you said, it's trying it's trying newer. Well, it's not really trying newer things. It's Dark Souls, but open world. So. I don't know if that's really I, I like think, enough of a new thing, but it definitely has like the biggest hype, the biggest like marketing push. I, you know? I would so I haven't played it, but from what I understand, uh, it's about the build that you have when you play through it. People want to keep replaying it over and over again. Right. You know, certain bosses became like a meme, um, and it kind of refines a lot of the Souls formula. Mm-hmm. It is just a Souls game, <laughs> but it's. A more refined version of the thing that everybody loves already. Right. I'm gonna skip this category. Okay. But if I had, I I feel like I can't vote for Elden Ring because I haven't played it, so I don't I don't want to do it. The next is best game direction, which sounds like it should be the same thing, but it's not. It's like it's like at the Oscars, they always complain. How does a movie get nominated for best picture but not best director? The movie didn't direct itself. True. Um, and I can see, um, a Place Tale and Xenoblade were not nominated for best direction. <laughs> Instead, this Why? game Immortality got nominated for Best Direction. Yeah, they. It's liter. It's almost the exact same games as Game of the Year, but they took out Xenoblade and A Plague's Tale. Yeah, which is kind of ridiculous. To yeah, know. it's ridiculous to take both of those out. Yeah, I feel like Japanese devs uh, don't get the sort of like rock star credit. Oh, that definitely not. American no, devs it's do. definitely more of. Um, you know, a team effort. Yeah. That's why, like, there's a handful of, like, Japanese devs that, like, you can, like, pinpoint to and, like, recognize, like, Miyamoto, uh, Igarashi, and whatnot. But, like, yeah. in America, there's always that one. Yeah. yeah. And and I think when Zelda Breath of the Wild cleaned at the Game Awards, um, the freaking, like... Didn't Doug Bowser accept it? Yeah, some... It wasn't Doug... It was... Wasn't it the other guy? The other... The other white dude. Oh, Bill Trinan. Glasses. Bill Trinan, I yeah. think, accepted it. Miyamoto's translator. <laughs> yeah, I think he accepted it. And it's yeah. like, you didn't make the game. How about the guy who directed the yeah. game picks up the yeah, game? Yeah, people know who A.G. Aonuma is. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a figurehead. That felt really yeah. bizarre. So, anyway. Um, oh, and also, I think Metroid, the same thing. That was it. Metroid Dread. Dread won for like a best adventure game, and Doug Bowser had to accept it. 
That's ridiculous because yeah. that was uh, not a rock star team of people. No. Like at least Zelda, you know who the game director is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metroid Dread, it was like, wasn't it like a Spanish dev team or yeah, something? Yeah, it was a, it was technically it was a third party studio, Metro, uh, Mercury yeah, Steam. Like, yeah. Give them some credit. Yeah. And I feel like that's what's happening with the Plague's Tale here. They kind oh, of, definitely. And Xenoblade, yeah. they're getting the shit under the stick. Immortality, I have no idea anything about yeah, that. Yeah, I honestly never heard of this game and I looked at the nominees before. I think game direction is it's all it's all about game design. So like yeah. like not just like people think of game direction and they think of like movie direction, mm-hmm. you know, like they think of the cinematics and stuff. Yeah. But it's more about the mechanics and how they how fun is that? Yeah. How good is the game? It's the director's job to yeah. make sure that it is it plays how good it does. So I know uh God of War Ragnarok had a different director than the first one. So props for him for coming like as close as he could to the original in terms of style and gameplay, and then doing doing whatever new things there are with the with the new game. Um, I don't know who directed Elden Ring, but I'd imagine somebody who could take the the Dark Souls type of game and make it open world like requires a lot of like good direction. Right. I'm gonna skip this one. Okay. If I had to pick, I would probably say Elden Ring again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Best narrative. Why the fuck is <laughs> Elden Ring here? <sighs> Not yeah. even a little bit of a narrative game. Well, I'm sure there's a story to it, but like yeah. a game like Elden Ring and a game and like the Dark Souls games and stuff, like the narrative is mostly like what you do, like mm-hmm. what the player does. And like to give it an award. I mean, when you say when you're giving it an award for best narrative, you're basically giving it an award for best story told as intended Mm -hmm. and with a game like elden ring you're not really gonna get like the actual story that the devs are giving you because they minimize the story so much that you have a good playing experience so yeah i don't i mean it it's probably gonna win for some (laughs) stupid reason um but i don't think it should i would actually be i would actually want to see a plague tale win this because everything i've heard about the game it's actually telling a compelling story about a brother and sister trying to survive the dark ages and plague right. rats uh and that sounds interesting and different from uh a game that doesn't really have a narrative two sequels and <laughs> whatever immortality is <laughs> i I feel like God of War probably has a really good narrative. I feel yeah. like the first one did from what I played. Yeah. And, uh, but, but I feel like A Plague Tale is a similar situation. It's got that AAA narrative. Well, it's in, A Plague Tale is interesting. I should also note that A Plague Tale is also a sequel. There was A Plague Tale Innocence and this is Requiem. Right. Um, that's a clear case of people didn't play the first game, but they heard good things. So now everyone's playing the second game. Right, right. Um, I saw Conan play it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that too. Yes. <laughs> that was good. Um what was, I, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. <laughs> All of the these are the same games that were in the game direction category, except they took out Stray, which does have a narrative. Yes, that's literally the only part of the game. Yeah, everything else is press forward and hold X. They took out that and put in what? Immortality. In, mm, yeah, for narrative, and they also took out Xenoblade. Which is weird to me because JRPGs are nothing but narrative. No, 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 no. They, 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 they put they, they put a Plague's Tale back in from from, from direction from to... game direction. Okay, they took out Stray and put in narrative. Got it. I uh, put in fuck a Plague's Tale record. I got and I got I got what you're saying. Uh, so we got a Plague's Tale record: Elden Ring, God of War, Forbidden West, and Immortality. Again, I'm not voting, <laughs> but if I, I would I would probably say either a Plague's Tale or God of War. Or whatever immortality is. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like immortality probably, if it's in this list, it's probably worth checking out. Yeah. It's probably worth knowing about. Uh, uh, art direction. I. Ah, this sucks. This is fucking so <laughs> stupid. There's got to be better game, a better directed game, better art directed games than this. Well, I'll say, because like, okay, we got repeats again. We got Elden Ring. We got God of War. We got Horizon Forbidden West. And we got Strike. Yeah. The only new game on this is Scorn. Scorn yes. should get the win because have you seen this game? Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It looks like you know your classic HR Geiger. That's what I was things. gonna say. Yeah, but like 
games don't look like that right now. Like, yeah, yeah sure, God of War is North, Norse mythology, and Horizon is like weird future apocalypse and whatnot, and Stray is cyberpunk. But like, a lot of games look like those. Yeah, you know, nothing really looks like Scorn right now. You're right. I think that there's a lot that goes into art direction in AAA games. Yeah. I will give them credit for that. I if if I if I love a game a lot, I will get the art book and flip through it and yeah. there's a lot of awesome shit. Um Elden Ring has some insane creature design uh-huh. and, and and some crazy landscapes. I'm sure God of War also has some great I'm sure all of these games have great art direction. I actually kind of really like the art direction in Stray as much right. as I'm shitting all over it. It's a very beautiful game. And the characters are 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 are, are well. They're like robots. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 nice. It's very nice. Uh, and I'm sure it was a small team of people, or whatever. Scorn is the most different, and, right. and you're right about that. But there's gotta be some more stylized games that came out this yeah. year. I have a very short list of games that I played this year that I compiled because on the Nintendo podcast, we're probably going to do a game of the year thing. And right. I was like, I didn't even play any games this year, but then I actually made a list and I actually did play a decent amount of games. Um, well, I only played three 2022 games this year. So only three, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Honestly, none of the games that I played are art direct, art direction material. Yeah. So I guess it's scorn. <laughs> you know what? I'll vote scorn. Okay. Scorn might take that one. It might. Steph Tendo says neon white art. Neon white Ooh. is incredible. Yeah. And it might be my game of the year. Okay. I didn't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would be good art direction, though. Yeah. Uh, okay, now we're on to best score and music. Again, Plague Tale, Elden Ring, God of War. Uh, Xenoblade is back. That has very good music. Yes. And uh, the new one is Metal Hellsinger. This has a really good soundtrack. So that is like, that's a wild card. I feel like yeah. they just went with AAA games and then threw a wild card in every yeah. once in a while. Metal Hellsinger is like... It's a rhythm first-person shooter where your ability to shoot on the beat will enhance your gameplay experience. I heard it's not that good. Really? I heard that the idea is really good, but then playing it is actually not what that good. What was the other game that has some kind of bullets per minute? That one I oh, heard. That's the name of a game? Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, there's got to be I know. better music than this. There's, I mean, there's Shovel Knight Dig has a pop. No, you know what has the best soundtrack this year? Curse to Golf. Mm, Curse to Golf yeah. soundtrack <laughs> is insane. Um, Neon White also has a really good soundtrack. Uh, Splatoon 3. Actually, yeah. Get Xenoblade out of there. Put yeah. Splatoon 3 in here. Yeah. That's my best soundtrack. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I'm not well versed in any of these soundtracks. I know Xenoblade Chronicles Three has a good soundtrack. I believe that Metal yeah. Metal Hellsinger has a good soundtrack. I, the rest of them just sounds like you know the problem is triple A stuff. You know me. the problem is too like a lot of modern video games don't really have like music like the way we used to have back in like the 80s it's and like 90s. A score. Yeah, it's like a score just meant to create like ambiance and yeah. like set the mood. It doesn't really like have anything that like you remember i have right. another cookie go for it you know very few games have like truly memorable songs wow yeah. you know so i'm skipping this one again okay audio design so this is different yeah this is like sound design this is yes. like yeah like in forza they like mic up every car yes they get the car and they mic it all up and you know, yeah. rev the engines. Uh, Forza is not nominated, but Gran Turismo Seven is. They do the same shit. Yeah. Turismo. <laughs> um, also, also, Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon, and uh, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two. I will say, Call of Duty, I give it a lot of shit. Yeah. It's a yearly release. It's usually the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty has some of the best sound design. It's, in video it definitely games. does. Yeah. The gun sounds and everything are incredible. And the, like the hit marker sound when you hit somebody is so fucking yeah. satisfying. So uh, I understand why that's in here. Yeah. It's like the one thing they get right every year. Yeah. Yeah. To me, this is a toss up between Gran Turismo 7 and Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Did Gran Turismo 7 come out this year? That's the thing. Like, I don't even remember <laughs> it coming out this year. You know, it used to be. Like the Gran Turismo games were the best-selling games on you know PS One and PS Two. Yeah, and then 
Gran Turismo 5, like on the PS5, it was like one of the best selling games for the system, but like nobody really cared about it right. as much. Like they like lost a lot of ground to Forza. I do like Forza a lot. Yeah. Um, it did come out in March. Oh, look at that. I don't know. It's a toss up to me. I'm inclined to say Call of Duty because I have more experience with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still haven't played this one. I've only yeah. seen it be played, but I know it has good sound. Yes. Anyway, we're going to read. We missed notifications. We'll read them after we're yeah. done with this uh, conversation here. All right. I voted for Call of Duty. All right. Uh, best performance. All right. Uh, Ashley Birch for Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, Charlotte McBurney for Plague's Tale. Uh, Christopher Judge for God of War Ragnarok. Uh, Man Engage for Immortality. And Sonny Soljic for God of War Ragnarok. Didn't the God of War... Didn't he die? Was it the old Kratos? No. I thought Kratos died. No. Uh, the, you're talking about the original voice actor for Kratos? Was it? I don't know. So there was a... I think his name was T.C. Carson. Was the original voice actor for the original God of War games. Then they just didn't hire him. For the 2018 game, they got Christopher Judge okay. to do it. Christopher Judge had a medical emergency, oh. so he didn't. So like they delayed the game a little bit for him to get better. Oh, okay, that makes That's more sense. That's what it was. Uh, well, he's incredible. He is. I feel like Char- Charlotte Mc- McBurney. Yeah, I feel like she's probably also really good at a place. Yeah, I feel like you know that's a game where like. She could probably like carry the whole thing. Don't need a lot of range to play Kratos. No, <laughs> I know that there's like it's very this emotional. Is, this story is like yeah, whatever, this is like new like, Kratos. This is sad dad Kratos, you know. But yeah, I know that he goes through some emotions, yeah. but it's still largely brooding Kratos. Mm-hmm. I feel like a Plague Tale probably has some more range necessary. Yeah, you know? uh, I'm going with that. All right. Okay. Games for impact. So what is what is this category? I don't even know for anymore. For a thought-provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. Like I the wo- the woke award. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better term. But even then like like how do you judge a category like that? Like it's hard because like every game has a mess every piece of art has a message yes so this is like which message is more important yeah you know which message is more important don't hate gay people don't hate black people don't hate yeah yeah yeah. like this it's such a we shouldn't have to be teaching people those things exactly yeah so also i don't know what the messages are and i've never heard of any i've heard of as dusk falls that's I've never heard of that's any another of thing these too. Other like, games before. I feel like this is just a way to like nominate weird indie games. Because weird yeah. indie like weird indie games is not a bad moniker. It's just that weird indie games are most likely the ones to have messages. I got nothing wrong with having a message in a game. Some messages need to be conveyed. Yes. You know? Yes. Um but this seems like a just a way to blow smoke up up your own ass. Oh, absolutely, you know? yeah. Look at us. We're nominating uh Games with messages. Their games are not just about killing things anymore. Yeah, uh, I can't vote because I don't know any of these. Yeah. What's a good game that came out this year that had a good message? I'm looking at my list. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, Shredder's Revenge. It shows that with uh, Brotherhood, it can overcome robot ninjas. It should no 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 no. Okay. Shred, it is Shredder's Revenge because they finally let April be a, uh, be a playable character, and it shows that girls can kick just as much ass as yes. uh, four giant reptiles. There you go. I was gonna say Cult of the Lamb, Hail Satan. Uh, there you go. All right, we got best ongoing. Okay, I like this. I actually like this, this yeah, category. This is a category that like, makes sense because games are ongoing now. Yeah, because games changed year to year yeah and a game might have come out two years ago but it's huge now and yeah. way different than it was and a it good example final fantasy 14 famously had a disastrous launch it was like with a worst game of worst review game of the year worst review game in the entire final fantasy series they took a they took two years to fix it and now it is one of the best mmos on the market right now I think my favorite example of a game like that is Rainbow Six Siege. Yes, that, that game came out that and too, I yeah. hated it. And then all of a sudden it had a huge boom after a mm-hmm. while. That's not here. 
But we have Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite, that's just... I feel like that's a game that is definitely ongoing. Yeah. I don't think it had a particularly good year this year. <laughs> yeah. I think it's been falling off. To be <sighs> pl- I mean, it did have the no build mode. Yeah. Which was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I think it's had better years. But like, even so, like, what... <sighs> Do you think, like, Fortnite is probably, like, what else can they do with that game? You know? It's done all it can no, do. No they, just, they just got to add characters now. That's it. Well, okay, so Destiny 2, I would love for it to be Destiny 2. Right. But uh, I'm waiting for, like, a big, huge moment in Destiny 2 to jump back into it. Yeah. Apex Legends did have a really big resurgence in a huge year this year. Yeah. So I'm inclined to vote for that. Genshin Impact is also another great one. But that company just made a new game that is basically uh, Genshin Impact, but uh, Cyberpunk. Oh. So I don't know about Genshin Impact. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna vote for Apex Legends. All right. There I you think go. that had a really big research. Also, it came out for the Switch this year. Yes, I remember that. Uh, was that this year? I think it was. I think it was too. Next. All right. Best indie game. Now, this is what we like to see. Yes. Uh, Cult of the Lamb, Neon White, Sifu, Stray, and Tunic. None of these seem like indie games. Yes. All of these you know, seem you're like right. really high budget indie games. These are like, you know, the classic double A games. Yeah, or from, triple I. Triple I, yes. They're ba- that's basically the same thing now. Um, well, I guess that's just, that also kind of speaks to the way like India has changed over the years because India yeah. used to be something that looked like you know, a Super Nintendo game, but like for adults with a yeah. super serious message. And now you got like a weird anime game. You got a game as a cat. You got a you got a fucking beat 'em up in there. <laughs> I actually played all of these except Sifu. Really? I really do want to play Sifu. It's on Switch now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm yeah. not playing the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> no shot. It's on PC, right? I'll play the I'll gladly play it on PC. Yeah. Um I feel like I would really like see. I love all of these were great except for Stray. I don't think Stray right. was that great. Um, I I feel like there's got there again. I think that there needs there if this is gonna be the indie category, there needs to be an indier category because <laughs> <laughs> these are too big. These games. yeah, we need another category for even smaller indie games. Like right. Games made by like just a handful of people. All of these, I mean, I really liked Call of the Lamb. I really liked Neon White. I really liked Tunic. And Stray was fine. I am having a toss-up between Call of the Lamb and Neon White because Call of the Lamb was also really good. No. Yeah. But I think that my experience was just heightened because of the Twitch integration. The Twitch right, integration right. was really good because, like, you could have people in Twitch chat in your cult. That was really cool. Yeah. But Neon White, I think... As a game was better. Okay. Like it, the gameplay is awesome and very unique. Got it. I never, if you show me, I don't know. It's it's hard to describe, but like it's super different the way right. that it's played. It's it's basically like a speed running. It's just a speed run. It, it's a game that makes you want to speed run. Got it. Got it. And it's way different than anything I've played recently. So I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on that. Again, that might be my game of the year period. <laughs> So if it's got to be indie game, then it's the indie game of the year. Yeah. Next is best mobile game. Uh oh, I've played a game on this, Marvel Snap. I have played Marvel Snap. I don't understand why you people think it's fun. <laughs> I was gonna say because I see a lot of stuff on Twitter. A lot of people playing it on it's Twitter. It's just like you know, you tap the screen and it's like make sure you got the higher numbers and like move your numbers over to these numbers, but watch out for these numbers. Like who has fun with that? Are you versing somebody? I'm I'm against the computer so far. Okay. Have you ever far played enough. Hearthstone? No. I liked Hearthstone. I wasn't expecting to like Hearthstone, okay. but I liked Hearthstone. Uh, I don't know if it's like that. It feels like a, it's a card game, right? Yeah, it's a card game. Okay. I don't know. So you don't like it? I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it. Uh, I haven't played Apex Legends Mobile. I heard Diablo Immortal was a good game ruined by microtransactions. Yes, that's what I've heard. Uh, what's this one with the girl's butt? Tower, Tower of Fantasy. Fantasy. That is a weeb game. Of course. Uh, 
I'm inclined to say Genshin Impact. I think the mobile version of that's really good. Yeah. 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 And it's seamlessly integrated with all of the other consoles okay. that it's on. There you go. So I'm voting for that. What's next? Uh, best community, community support. support. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and response in this inclu- inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches. I don't think Fortnite belongs there <laughs> i don't know if they have a good community support no uh um, destiny did but the guy the main guy Deej, left uh-huh. and i don't know what it's like anymore apex legends i feel like probably does no man's sky has been supported that might have been better for best ongoing game yeah because that got fixed really good i don't yeah. know about community support for that final fantasy 14 might be it yeah, I think I think you're right because like they're always like tweeting out uh, new things and like uh, you know DLC for it and like reaching out to like players who have issues and stuff. That's what I think of community support. I think of uh, doing certain things for the community, like events mm-hmm. and stuff for players, and also for streamers and to support them to get their communities to be involved in the game. So that's why I'm like not. I don't think Fortnite or No Man's Sky yeah. belongs. I'm doing Final Fantasy. All right. Innovation in accessibility. Recognize the software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward in adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. I think the best uh, accessibility options in any game is the Last of Us series. Yes. They're here, mm-hmm. but it's Last of Us Part 1. Yes. Which is basically the same as the Last of Us Part 2. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I want to vote for it. Right. Uh, I have heard God of War had really good accessibility features. Uh, I don't know about As Dusk Falls or Monkey Island or The Quarry. I wish that if you hover over it, they would tell you why it was nominated for these. That things. would be nice. So, yeah, I might skip this one. I, I feel like God of War probably has great accessibility yeah. options compared to everything. I, I, huge AAA games should have, have the resources yeah. to have great accessibility options yeah and that's what naughty dog mm-hmm. does and you know naughty dog and sony santa monica they are sony owned studios it shouldn't be that hard for sony santa monica to call naughty dog and say hey give us your accessibility features yeah you know i'm gonna i'm gonna skip it okay uh best vr or ar game okay All i right. can't yeah, I can't speak to any of these. Can't speak to any of these. I've I played I, Moss One. True. So have I. Moss is fantastic. Yes. I hope that wins. Among Us VR though is probably the the, yeah. the one that's gonna win. That mm-hmm. I mean, Among Us won a few years ago, didn't it? I think so. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm skipping this one. There's also so there's After the Fall, Among Us VR, Bone Lab, which is probably good. Yeah. Moss Book Two and Red Matter Two, which I don't know about. Uh, so I'm going to skip this one. Yeah. Somebody in the chat says, uh, Unbroken, Al- uh, Unbroken Alchemy says, I just listened to your Game of the Year episode from last year, and your comments about Destiny, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky were exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Not much changes around Yeah. Here. You know, they say the more things change, the more things This is what I do. Change. I play a game once, and then that's my opinion on it yeah. for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Best action game. Uh, Bayonetta 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Neon White, Sifu, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. I feel like action game, they always put what should have also been in Game of the Year. Yeah. This is like the makeup for Game of the Year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have not played Bayonetta 3. No, I'd imagine it's not that different from Bayonetta 1 and 2. That's a series like, that game, the first game starts over the top. Mm-hmm. Where do you go from there? I don't know. I, I only played a little bit of Shredder's Revenge. I only played it at a convention. I didn't actually like play the game. I mean, I I played it. That actually should have got nominated for Best Art Direction because it looks exactly yeah. like the cartoon. That's yeah. well, it, the animation is incredible. Yeah, in that game. Um, it's very good. It's very. It, it's it's what I would call like an action game, like boiled down to its essentials. Mm-hmm. Like it has like you know collectibles you can find, and like some like, has a map screen and stuff. But it, it's also like for the most part a no bullshit action game. Go to the right, kill everything in your path, try not to die. Right. So, I feel like, uh, yeah, Bayonetta is like over the top. Call of Duty's Call of Duty. Yeah, Sifu might 
be the definition of an action game. Well, Sifu has also has like a good gimmick. You know, every time you die, you age, and you only have True. a finite amount of time to beat the game. So at least that's that's pushing the genre forward in an interesting way. Yeah. You know, you can say the same thing about Neon White too. That's my favorite game of the year. Mm-hmm. But I don't see action is it's a hard thing to define because there's yeah. you're doing action in Neon White. It's an action game, but for whatever reason, there's I feel like there's more action in Sifu. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the, the description is for the best game in the action genre focused primarily in on combat. Then we're going with Sifu okay. because Neon White, the plat- there's a lot of platforming. Okay. And and like you you use enemies and abilities to platform. So Got it. I'm going with Sifu. Okay. Next is best action adventure. Uh, combining- and that's and this is fucking stupid. Combining this traversal is with puzzle pissed. solving. <laughs> It, this says it combines co- combat with traversal and puzzle solving, but that's, fucking that's fucking neon white. That's, that's fuck, exactly what neon white is. That's fucking every game. That's fucking every triple A game is an action game with traversal and puzzle solving. Well, well, okay, God of War, it has combat, and then it also has traversal and puzzle solving. Right, neon white is you're doing combat while traversing and also puzzle solving. Right. You're doing all of those things at the exact same time, which is why the game is so good. Yeah. That should fucking be here. If that's your definition of action adventure game, Neon White wins this. Yeah. Stray, fuck you. There's no not a, <laughs> there's like there's like yeah, four there's, seconds of combat. There's no in action in that game. You no. can't uh I was like, way to throw a bone to Tunic here. I would say Tunic <laughs> is probably the best definition of an action adventure game because it emulates like classic Zelda games, which yes. were action adventure. That yes. those were actual adventures. You were going on adventures. I'll give it a Tunic, fine, because I'm sick of the friggin' uh, AAA formula of yeah. of combat puzzle, combat puzzle, because the puzzles just slow down the combat. Yeah. Anyway. I'm giving it to Tunic. All right. Best role playing game: Elden Ring, Live Alive, Pokemon Legends, Arceus, Triangle Strategy, and Xenoblade Chronicles Three. I have my gripes with Legends Arceus. Yeah, um, I feel like most people do. I feel like Live Alive. That's the one everybody loved. Everybody who played that loved it. Yeah, but I, but you you know if you're not gonna like that game, like mm-hmm. I'm probably not gonna like yeah. it, so I'm not gonna play it. Elden Ring, I mean, yeah, it's an RPG. Yeah. But, like, when I think RPG, I'm thinking, like, turn-based stuff. Yeah. Well, no, well that, I don't think that's fair, because, like, the, a lot of RPGs now are, like, you know, real-time combat, especially Western RPGs. I, I think the term RPG is very broad. I do think that Elden Ring is the definition of an RPG. Right. But uh, for some reason, the stigma is turn-based well, because that's what it was, especially JRPGs for a very yeah. long time. I don't know. I don't think Arceus, 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 I don't think that takes yeah. it at all. Um, I'm going to skip it. I'm okay. going to completely skip it. Uh, best fighting game. Uh, DNF Duel, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, King of Fighters 15, Multiverses, and Sifu. Pause. <laughs> I know where I know where you're going. Wait, so Sifu is both an action game and a fighting game now? It is not a fighting it is game, not... period. Yeah, when you say f- a fighting game is a clearly defined genre of video game is that it? you specifically say in the description, the best game designed primarily for he- head-to-head combat. In Sifu, you're fighting a bunch of people at once. So, fighting game, according to Wikipedia, also known as versus fighting game, is a genre of video game that involves combat between two or more players. Right. Already out. Already yeah. Sifu is not it, because that's yeah. a one guy <laughs> game. That's a one player, you're playing by yourself. Yeah. Fighting game combat often features mechanics such as blocking, grappling, counterattacking, and chain attacks together into combos. Okay. You yeah, you can do that in a game like Sifu, but you can also do that in a side scrolling beat 'em up. Which is basically what Sifu is. Yeah, so if Sifu's here, why isn't Shredder's Adventure? Exactly. A Sifu does not deserve to be here. No, Sifu does not deserve to be um, here. Uh, I don't know anything about any of these other games except for multiverses. Yeah. And I feel like that is probably not the best fighting game because that is not a good game. <laughs> 
it's popular though. People like are playing it and enjoying it. It's 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 memeable. It's That's memeable what it is. is is so, why is where the fun comes from. Yeah. I don't think as a as a well designed game, probably not. Right. Um, I feel like I don't, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle Arc is that really that good? Isn't that a remake? Probably. That was a remake. King of Fighters 15 and DNF Duel, probably. King of Fighters, like, that's, that's, I mean, we're on the 15th one. That's, the game's been around forever. Uh, it's the perennial, always the bridesmaid, never the bride type of situation. Okay. Like, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, it's, like, people like it and they'll play it, but, like, as soon as a new Street Fighter drops, man, fuck you, King of Fighters. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So. All right, I'm skipping this. <laughs> I don't have enough data. Best family game. Aw. Family. We got Kirby uh, in the Forgotten Land. We got Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. We got Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. That game came out. Like yes. A fart in the wind. <laughs> I'm surprised too. Didn't hear anything about it yeah. after the day it came out. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports and Splatoon Three. We yes. Got a lot of Nintendo. Well, Nintendo is the platform for babies, Bob. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Why the? F- <sighs> this bothers me because Kirby in the Forgotten Land is a genuinely incredible game. Yeah. And it's it's relegated to the family category and that's it yeah that this deserves a little more credit than that yeah um i feel like this could go to the skywalker saga because it is like of all these games it is the most game okay (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean kind of so i i think that um that was highly anticipated that was like uh delayed for a long time yeah Nintendo Switch Sports, I wanted to be better than it was. I yeah. wanted it to be really good, and it really wasn't that great. Uh, I'm still waiting for golf. Where's golf? Yeah, I'm surprised it's not been added yet. It's we're in, in November. Yeah. Uh, and Splatoon three, I don't think that's a good family game. I think that's yeah. just a good versus game. Yeah, it's a good game for friends, but like, you know, that playing with your friends is one thing versus playing with your family. You know. Yeah, playing when with you, like kids. Is when stuff. you think about like playing with your family, you're thinking of more like you know. Uh, co-op centric game yeah you know in the, so i do think that so yeah i don't think mario plus rabbits is good either for that i think kirby kind of is but lego star wars is, i think the lego games are some of the best co-op games yeah so i'll give it to i'll give it to lego star well then nintendo switch sports is good to play with the family true we sports yes was the shit yes i'm still giving it to lego star wars uh, best sim slash strategy game? I am not. Uh, Dune, Spice Wars, Mario plus Rabbit, Sparks of Hope, Total War, Warhammer 3, Two Points Campus, and Victoria 3. Uh, I hear great things about Mario plus Rabbids in the strategy category. Yes. I'm skipping this. I'm uh, not equipped yeah. for strategy. Best sports slash racing game. We got F1 22. We got FIFA 23. NBA 2K 23. Gran Turismo 7, and Ali Ali World. That is, without a doubt, the We Need a Wild Card sports title. Oh, there's this weird indie skateboarding game. Give it to them. That is what that is. I'm inclined to give it to them. You should give it to them because (laughs) it's F1 22, FIFA 23, NBA 2K 23, Gran Turismo 7. How many of those fucking games have we gotten over the years? And here's a genuinely new, interesting, unique take on the skateboarding genre. Yeah, I mean, if it's not Ali Ali World, I would have given it to Gran Turismo Seven because at least you know mm-hmm. it, it. It's not something we get every year, you know. Yeah. But I'm gonna give it to Ali Ali World. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, best multiplayer game. Uh, Modern Warfare Two, Multiverses, Overwatch Two, Splatoon Three, and Shredder's Revenge. I have not played Shredder's Revenge multiplayer. I have. I played local. No. Um, with Dan. So I played that. I played Overwatch 2. I played Splatoon 3. I did not play Call of Duty yet. Um, I've heard the multiplayer in Call of Duty is the multiplayer in Call of Duty. That's why I haven't yeah. played it because I'm waiting for Warzone. So I don't want to give it a Call of Duty until Warzone 2 comes yeah. out. Um, Splatoon 3 is very good. Mm-hmm. I think it could have been better. I think it is a lot of copy and paste from the first, from the second game. Overwatch 2 is also pretty good. It got a lot of shit, but I think it's yeah. pretty good. Huh. I don't know what to do here yeah i Uh, might i might abstain from this one too okay that's fine abstaining is not a problem because i uh, I, these aren't what is my favorite 
My favorite multiplayer game of the year is Valorant. That did not come out this year. <laughs> Content creator of the year. I noticed there is a big omission here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hate this. <laughs> a certain two brothers are not, yeah. not a part of this. Come on, man. So... For content creator of the year, let's see, read the definition. For a streamer or content creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community in 20. Oh, it's because we say fuck. It's because we say fuck. We said it a few times <laughs> yeah. this year. Carl Jacobs, I think, has not posted like at <laughs> all. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. Is he the one? People were, were. Carl Jacobs. I don't know. I think he's like just on other people's stuff. I don't think he actually. Yeah, look, on YouTube, everything's from last year. Okay, so definitely not him. So I, I don't understand what that's about. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, but he, I have seen him on other people's streams. Uh, maybe he just streams. I don't know. Maybe. Ludwig had a pretty big year. Did he switch to YouTube this year or last year? I think year? so. I think it was this year. He had a huge year. Nobelian, I think people... I saw particularly OJ Player Essence was shitting mm -hmm. on this because all he does is repost news on Twitter. Yeah. But he did a really good job. Of yeah, <laughs> and he he I think he was a very big iconic games media person on Twitter. Yes, because of how quickly and how on top of things he was. Yes, I frequently went to his threads as recaps for events mm -hmm. for the show too. Yeah, um, so I do think he was uh, a big. He had a big impact on mm -hmm. on the the gaming community, or at yeah. least the way that I consumed content. Uh, and he recently just quit. He yeah. quit like a like a like a week ago yeah. or, or something. He just said, "I'm so, out. I'm done." Thanks, Elon. <laughs> we do think it yeah. it was the day Elon took over. Yeah. Um. But he just said, "I'm going to focus on personal stuff." Goodbye. And he just went dark. He didn't yeah. give any reasoning. He was just like, "Goodbye." Uh. So I think that's probably why he's here, and also because Jeff Keighley probably is very familiar with him yeah. because. He's part of the games industry. I think it's a little ridiculous to say that his work wasn't content. You know, it definitely changes what you think of a content creator, of what a content creator is. Because usually you think of like somebody who posts videos or pictures of themselves and stuff. And that he wasn't doing that. He was posting news. Yeah. Which, you know, it it's it's a necessary thing because like... You know, you, you got YouTubers who post the news, but they're content creators because they make videos of themselves doing it's, it. I think the difference... Well, here's a question. Are we creating content right now? Yes. Because usually what we do is we just read other people's articles. Yeah. <laughs> we, I, kind of what we're doing now. The difference, I think, is that YouTubers will add their own commentary. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, we, we give, like, opinions. And he did and, kind of, but yeah. it was mostly just reposting stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that that is content creation. I yes. think what he... Because he's aggregating. Mm -hmm. And there are people who do that for websites. Like, IGN, yeah. like, I think they got in trouble because they posted and They posted... A, they were looking for an ad, somebody to aggregate news. Yeah. And it was, like, 20 bucks an article. But you're yeah. literally just saying, this happened, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know? So you're not adding anything. You're just doing what Nobelian did. So that yeah. I think that there's uh, uh, merit to what he did. No brew. I don't know him at all. Right. Uh, and Cutie Cinderella, that's Ludwig's girlfriend. Okay. And she made a lot of different. She handled a lot of different events uh, on Twitch for for other Twitch streamers and stuff. Okay. Um. I think she did a really good job this year. I think she had a big year. I think she made some great events. I do think that a lot of her events are just like, she's friends with all the big streamers. So it's just like, here's all the big streamers hanging yeah. out, you know? So I don't want to give her too much credit. Right. I mean, she puts a lot of work into the events that she does, but at the same time, it's like, how much work do you need to do <laughs> to get all of your friends yeah. in a room, you know? So I don't know. I want to give it a Nobelian just do for it. the fuck just of it. Just do it. Yeah. I do think if was this year the year that Ludwig switched to YouTube because I think that he deserves a little bit too. But I kind of want to give it to Nobelian. Give it to Nobelian. He's clearly your favorite. I genuinely used his content a lot. Yeah. So and 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 it's made he wouldn't have been on this list if he didn't quit Twitter a week ago. Probably not. Yeah. But uh, and I probably wouldn't have given it to him if he didn't quit <laughs> Twitter a week ago.
It was last year, last November that Love the Week switched. Okay, then mm. fuck them. Then, then it's Nebelian. <laughs> I don't want to keep. I don't want to discredit Cutie for no uh, yeah. the events that she did. Uh, but again, it's she even says she admitted like she made a a, a streamer awards like her mm-hmm. own version, and it's literally just her friends. Yeah. So, uh, best debut indie. Neon White, Norco, Stray, Tunic, and Vampire Survivors. For the best debut game created by a new independent studio. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that applies to all of them. So Stray was co-developed with Annapurna, or was it published? Pub- by probably published by Annapurna. Okay. Because yeah. that bothers me. Because Annapurna is a well-established yes. studio. Yeah. Um, I heard crazy things about vampire survivors yeah same i've heard it's like very popular i again neon white is my favorite uh-huh. i think vampire survivors might need to get the win here because of really? how impactful it was yeah you have like a million concurrence at one point okay so i feel like that's gotta take it uh all right we're all we're, we're getting we're making headway yeah. here. best adaptation Recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. This would not have been a category five years ago. <laughs> this is very interesting. Oh, one year ago wouldn't have been a category. True, yeah. This is an interesting one. And there's some great stuff here. Yeah. Arcane uh, Legend. League of Legends. League of Legends. Is, did that come out this year? Yeah. Okay. I heard that was incredible. Yeah. Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I also heard was incredible. The Cuphead Show. I don't know what I heard. Yeah, I haven't heard any. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, still haven't seen it. Yep. Uncharted should not. Absolutely absolutely not. not I don't think anybody liked that movie. So Cyberpunk, I feel like, I feel like Arcane Legend, uh, League of Legends is probably the best one here. Yeah. But it came out a while ago, like earlier in the year, and Cyberpunk is brand new and fresh. I w- I'm inclined to like give the edge to Cyberpunk because of what you just said, um, because they use Franz Ferdinand's "This Fire" as the opening song. Okay, so uh, but also this game, this this show did a lot to bring people back to playing the game. True, you know, the biggest disappointment of 2020. Yeah, they probably. Uh... So here, here, hold on. The, the definition of best adaptation according to the game awards is recognition recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium mm-hmm. the cyberpunk faithfully and authentically adapt the video game because i think it makes it a lot better <laughs> so i don't it's different it's different okay okay counterpoint they put sifu in best fighting game so clearly they're not playing by their own rules all right all right you're not wrong there i'll, I'll i mean so it, it it enhanced cyberpunk yes. for sure also arcane league of legends league of legends it's like it's fucking like top-down strategy yeah how are you gonna faithfully adapt that so whatever uh it's going with cyberpunk next most anticipated game this is or- a stupid award <laughs> Do they do this for movies? No. No. The, well, they, they do this in every game award. Yeah. It, all right. What are you looking forward to the most? Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Starfield, or Legend of Zelda? Now we have an actual title. Your most anticipated is Resident Evil 4. No. No? No. I think the most anticipated out of all of these is either Starfield or Zelda. Yeah. In my world, it's Zelda. Well... I think I don't know if it's Starfield because it got delayed, and I don't think people are as hyped about it as they once were. Well, Zelda got delayed, but True, people but are still kind of Zel- hyped about it. That's Zelda. This is Starfield. This is a Bethesda made game. It's a Todd Howard Bethesda game, and those games have been uh, buggy and glitchy and disappointing like this past generation. So like they're, they're already starting like on a down note. Okay. So also, it's the first Todd Howard Bethesda game post microsoft acquisition so it's going to be an xbox exclusive so that has a lot riding on it i don't think people are as excited for it as they once were because of that i'm going for zelda okay best esports game for the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to the players including inclusive of tournaments community support and content updates irrespective of genre or platform uh people still playing some of these that's games? a long definition Counter-Strike Global Offensive? 
Okay. Dota 2. I mean, Counter-Strike has a huge community. It, it does. It's, no, it does. It, it's an old game. Yeah. Uh, Dota 2, League of Legends, Rocket League, and Valorant. I have to vote for Valorant because it's literally the only thing right. that I've ever seen any eSport of. Yeah. Again, like I don't know anybody who's still playing Rocket League or Dota 2. I sports. never, ever, ever see Smash Brothers in this category. There's yeah. never any Smash Brothers eSports That's because like, Nintendo's weird thing with eSports. So... Know? I know. So we gotta fight against that. Yeah, it should be Smash Brothers should be here. Best esports athlete. Oh god, I'm not gonna know any of these people. <laughs> Do we even want to read these? Uh, we got we got Chovy, we got Faker, we got Kirigan, we got Simple, and we got Yay. Um, chat, you tell us who to vote for. I hear good things about Faker. Yeah, literally the only guy I've ever heard of. I'm gonna hit next. Best esports team. I'm also not gonna know any of these. Uh, Dark Zero Esports, FaZe Clan. Okay, no. Gen G, LA Thieves, and Loud. Loud. I only know of LA Thieves. I'm skipping. Yeah. Uh, best Esports Coach. I don't know these fucking people either. <laughs> I'm skipping that. Uh, best Esports Event. Evo, Evo 2022. There you go. Uh, 2020. But I don't think Smash wasn't there at all. I don't think so. Uh, League of Legends World Championship 2022, PGL Major Antwerp 2022, the 2022 Midseason Invitational, Valorant Champions 2022. I saw a little bit of Evo, but I'm not. I'm not voting for that. Yeah. All right, and that's it. There you go. Those are the game awards. I voted for 16 out of the 31 awards. <laughs> that's how little I was into these games yeah and yeah. for the game stuff it was all the same games yeah i feel like that's the biggest disappointment because like award shows are supposed to like celebrate the medium as a whole so there should be like a wide swath of like nominees and selections and stuff but it's always, it's always like the same handful yeah of things so especially like this year for this particular award show mm -hmm. and like award shows in general are really just like you know the industry patting themselves on the back. It's the same thing with the Grammys and the Oscars and the Emmys and stuff. Um, but this, this just feels like the most egregious example of it yeah. this year. So, yeah, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the game awards. I like watching it. It's a nice spectacle. I like the announcements. That they make well, there. that's I, the big thing. Like you're watching the game awards primarily for the announcements. Yeah. It's mostly just a long commercial. I think it's a nice show. And I do like, talking about the games that get yeah. nominated and stuff um i am i don't know if it's a commentary on the game awards themselves or a commentary on the industry as a whole uh like the type of games that get nominated yeah i feel like there just wasn't anything good this year I that feel like too. there's a lot yeah. of just just fluff yeah and they didn't really have a lot to work with so, yeah the only real criticism i have it, it, so the i mean like the game like the big game of the years i'm disappointed there's a lot of triple a fluff but like yeah. that's just how the industry is yeah. my biggest criticism with the game awards is that the indie category was a lot of expensive games like yeah. they're not like <laughs> true indies there should be another category for even smaller games uh and fucking sifu's not a fighting game yeah that's really my biggest criticisms anyway it's been a while why don't we read notifications yes let's do that uh i don't know how to do that even uh we got alec is baking with 25 months brothers in the same room couldn't be me and my brothers <laughs> jin wong thanks for the 20 months 20 months and still loving the content well thank you valiant paradox thanks for the seven months 16-bit gambit thanks for the 18 months wordle the true game of the year that's yeah. true yeah yeah. But that came out last year, didn't it? Well, I mean, it's been out for a long time, but yeah. it was discovered last year, wasn't it? I think so. Because I've been playing it. I still yeah. play it every day. I missed the day and I like fell, fell off the wagon like hard. Now, what, me and Hannah play it every day. Right. But now we play the Wordle. We play the Mini, which is a mini crossword. Uh-huh. And then there's a game called Guess the Dot Game. Guess uh -huh. the game. Yeah. Guess the Dot Game. I play that every day. It's fucking awesome. They give you a close-up screenshot of a game. Uh-huh. 
and then you get six tries and like it, it gives you a different screenshot every time okay my f- i've gotten a, a bunch in one shot and they're like <laughs> wacky i got one that was a tree and i it was league of legends wow i've never fucking played league of yeah. legends before <laughs> in my life anyway um i feel like most people here would probably be pretty good at guess the game um seth films twitch uh thank you for the 13 months i got chills seeing the boys back together for a wolf den podcast in a basement well get yep, used get to used it. to it brutal beast 12 thanks for the 25 months hey bob and will what version of pokemon y'all getting i actually pre-ordered it today i'm getting the violet version i'm not getting either <laughs> i'm getting violet don't yell at me for pre-ordering i'm doing it because i want the game early and there's a special right, right. system i have to do uh i'm getting violet because i like the violet version of the mega man pokemon he's like purple he's <laughs> yeah, got sword yeah. hands um hyper Sechi, thank you for the nine months sometimes it looks like the oscars for animated movie where people admitted not watching the movies yeah, well, that was a well. That's a lot of categories that the Oscars voters will be like. I didn't. I didn't watch any of these movies. Then they shouldn't vote. Yeah, they well, shouldn't. well, they do. That's fucked up. That yeah, is fucked up. They shouldn't. The be Oscars have a lot of problems like that. Um, Kiko, but thanks for the thirty-six months. Thirty-six months. It seems like only yesterday. One long, endless, inter, in, interminable, yesterday. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost of Gordy, thanks for the 25 months. I missed the return of the Oreo taste test. Ah, piss. Well, you I've did. been tasting them yep. throughout the episode. <laughs> uh, the Konami Man. Thanks for gifting a sub to the Konami Man. No, to Conquerosaurus. And the Konami Man, thanks for the seven months. Sorry, I always forget to re-up my Prime sub on time, so I give this up. Well, thank you. You don't have listen. As long as you're doing it at all. Yes. We're happy. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch, and you could support us for at no cost to you. It gives us money, so we can continue to have a nice little studio set. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, WolfdenApparel.com. Yes, those hats are not available. They are not. But, but this shirt's glow in the dark. It's cool. Look at it. It's a Game Boy shirt. Anyway. Uh, let's plow through the rest of this news as yes. quickly as possible because there's a lot and we only did one thing. <laughs> uh, let's do the indie direct, I guess, is more important. Yeah. Okay. Well, didn't didn't you say there were PS Plus? Oh, games? yes, I did. Uh, PS Plus. We're extra. late in the month, aren't we? Yeah, they don't do them. They don't do them like at the beginning of the month anymore. They do those like in the middle. Ah, so let's do that now because that's pretty important. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got PlayStation Plus Extra games. Uh, yeah, these are the November. games that you get for if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium. Okay. Uh, I am, and I haven't touched it, so I should probably cancel that subscription. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so you get The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Interesting. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which we were just talking about. I thought that was free to play. Uh no. Oh no, it's in Game Pass already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix and Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue and Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, interesting. So the entire Kingdom Hearts saga. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Uh Odd World Soul Storm. Uh Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Uh Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Chorus. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch? Okay. Uh, and the gardens between. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, also, they're added uh, the Ratchet and Clank games to uh, PlayStation Plus Premium, and also coming is two Earth Defense Force games and Oni Chanbara Origin. That's a that's a weeb game. Yeah. I think there's boobies in it. Ooh, I like Which those. Might be why they didn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a lot of boobs in that game. Oh, yeah, okay. look at his boobies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Okay. That's a lot of games. Yeah. I, I think that PlayStation Plus Premium has a lot of great value. Mm-hmm. Division 2, I have to shit all over it. Um, Rainbow Six Siege, I mean, it's already on Game Pass. I think Elder Scrolls Skyrim is also on Game Pass. Well, yeah, because they own that studio now. 
So that's interesting that they own that. That's mm-hmm. Microsoft Studio. Yeah, and it's on PlayStation Plus. See, premium. Sony, they'll let you have Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to bitch anymore because you're getting. They seem to be playing very fair. Yeah, I kind of want to try Ghost Recon, but I feel like it's probably going to be just like the Division. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right, what's what's for Game Pass? Uh, <clears throat> well, available now is that game Pediment I was all telling you about, oh, okay. and Somerville. <clears throat> Coming soon, Dune Spice Wars, uh, Ghost Lore, uh, Lapin, Norco, Gungrave Gore, the mm-hmm. new Gungrave game. That's going to launch on Game Pass day one. Uh, Insurgency, Sandstorm, Soccer Story, Warhammer 40K, Dark Tide, and that's it. So I played Gungrave Gore at a convention. Okay. It's very bad. Ooh. I'm very disappointed because <laughs> I really wanted to yeah. like that game. Uh, the, 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 I, there's it was like a there's like a shitty cutscene, oh. and then the gameplay feels very much like a PlayStation Two game. It looks like it exactly like it did on the PS2, but like it's like clunky and like uh, not good. It's yeah. it's bad. They they there is a huge missed opportunity. I'm yeah. very disappointed in it. Um. And that was before it's released, obviously, but yeah. I don't feel like there's any fixing it. It doesn't look like <laughs> no. It's I mean, I just saw like a gameplay reveal trailer, and it looks exactly like it did on PS2. Like, no, they didn't change anything. I gotta play the PS2 version again because I feel like that was better. Yeah, but I think it's just maybe I things have changed in the twenty years since yeah, that exactly. game. So, yeah, and they didn't change anything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we really liked the PS2 game and the yeah. anime. Yes, the anime is probably my favorite anime. Uh, soccer story? Yeah, I don't know soccer story. That's not the same. That's not the same as golf story and sports story, right? No. At least I don't think it is. <laughs> Looks very similar. I'm sure it's very similar. Wait, I think it might be. What am I thinking of? Wait. What are you thinking of? There are a lot of Golf like... Golf Story... What's the one that's coming out? For Switch. That was in the last indie... Hey, we're going to talk about the indie yeah, world. Let's, let's talk about let's it right, talk about now, it right now. We'll learn all about it. Um, I don't know. Did any of these games excite you? Yes, actually. Really? Yes. Okay. Why? Um, did you think it was a bad indie world? I, know, I was just I didn't see anything that like jumped out at me. There's a better uh uh list. Okay. I just literally grabbed the official Nintendo list. Uh, the in uh the here it is. I'm gonna put it in the key. The, the okay. um I'll put it right under it. It's uh a Nintendo Life. Okay. The only it's it's all in order except for the second game that they put. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was I wasn't wrong. First game is Venba, which is a, uh, it's basically Cooking Mama, but Indian food. Yes. And that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to play it, but it looks pretty cool. <laughs> Sports Story. Is the Sports next yeah. Story. So I wasn't wrong. Right. Sports Story. Now, that was actually the last game that they announced. That was the one yeah. more thing. I don't know why they put it second in this article. Uh-huh. It was probably should have been first because it's the big, most important yeah. thing. Um, but... That's the biggest. That's the biggest deal. One more thing. Yeah. That's one that every time there's an indie world, people are like we're a sports story. So uh, that is the sequel to Golf Story, mm-hmm. but with more sports. Yes. So. So soccer story. Does that have anything to do I with this series not, of game? I guess not. I guess it's a separate thing. Anyway, I'd like to try out Sports Story. It'd be yeah. nice if there was a demo. A game called Goodbye World, which sees. You play as like two game devs, and they yeah. also play their game. It's like a Game Boy game. Yeah. Uh, then we have Have a Nice Death. This which looks, looks fun. Fucking awesome. Yeah, this looks fun. It looks like a uh, uh, Hollow Knight, but with like very polished animations. Yeah. Uh, Aka, which I wasn't that into. Yeah. Uh, this seems like an isometric. Like, oh, it's not isometric. Oh, it's a little isometric. Um, looks like a adventure puzzle game. Yeah. 
uh, pepper grinder. This looks good. Looks awesome. This looks really good. This uh, it, it's a side scroller, but you use like the drill mm -hmm. as like a momentum mechanic, and you drill through like the environment. And yeah. stuff. it's also a weapon. It looks really fucking cool. Yeah, uh, kind of reminds me a little of Sonic too because of how fast it is. Yeah. Coffee Talk Episode 2, which people keep talking to us about, but this is, an, this is a yeah. sequel to the Coffee Talk game. I've played the demo of Coffee Talk 1, and yeah. this looks exactly the same. <laughs> yes. Uh, then we got Oni, which is... Road to be the mightiest Oni. Looks like um, s something like uh, Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild yeah. like, combined. Mm -hmm. Um desta the memories between now i wasn't interested in this game until i heard that it was the developers of monument valley oh yeah that's right it and is a character driven roguelike uh basketball game uh i thought it was more like dodgeball i i thought i thought i saw baskets i could be wrong no i think they're hurting each other okay. I, th I think it's a dodgeball game okay uh, but yeah, that's the thing is that like it's a strategy dodgeball. It's yeah. like a tactics dodgeball game. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about that, but no. I have a little bit of faith in the Monument Valley devs because yeah. they're very good. I'd like to play this on a phone. Yeah. But uh, I'll give it a try if it's on the phone. A Space for the Unbound looks like, uh, this looks like a narrative. Yeah. Slice of Life adventure that tells the story of Overcoming anxiety, depression, and a relationship between a boy and a girl with supernatural powers. So fun. <laughs> uh, door dog. This looks very pretty. Yes, it's a uh, very watercolor. Reminds me of that Shin Chan game. <laughs> uh, a lot of pretty games here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Botany Manor, which looks like a mist style game, like a like a yeah like a puzzle find out what's going on where the fuck you are mm -hmm. once upon a jester i know nothing about this you game. play as a jester and you perform stage plays uh wood said he was really into this game because it looks like a parody of itself yeah uh rogue legacy 2 which i'm surprised wasn't getting a lot of uh love i guess because the game's out already just yeah what, it's not on switch well it is now it is now yeah uh Bl blanc which yeah. looks very pretty they keep saying it's a heartfelt game, which means one of them's yeah, not going to make yeah. it. So I don't want to play this game. Yeah. But it looks like a good co-op mm -hmm. game. Uh, Wrestle Quest. This was in like a one more thing. Yeah, so, this was in like the montage. Yeah, I feel like they didn't spend enough time. Yeah, I mean, pro wrestling RPG fantasy uh, where you could play with Macho Man, Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, and other real iconic wrestlers. I just noticed that they are stylized like action figures. Oh, yeah. You can see... Uh, They're like elbow joints. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, it looks cool if you're into wrestling. Yes. You are. Yes. Will you play this? Uh, I'll... If there's a demo, I'll check it out. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Wobble Dogs. Uh, I think this was another montage game. Yeah. Looks silly. Uh, Storyteller. Uh, not not interested. Uh, World of Horror looks like uh, Junji Ito style, yeah. like a uh, manga type, like point and click adventure. I'll say. Uh huh. Uh, looks kind of cool. Uh, sea of Curse of the Sea, Curse of the Sea Rats. Mm -hmm. I'm not in love with the art style of the game. Yeah, it looks like it could be fun, but I don't love the art style. Uh, it's a side scroller. Yeah inscription is like a weird and wacky card game and a, a little to the left is like unpacking but, but like but your cat can like interfere with your it, it's mostly puzzles yeah but it's like weird puzzles because like you organize things the way that that feels satisfying to you okay, so That's... can you lose i don't know i guess you lose if you can't stop your cat from messing up your <laughs> Uh, and that was it. Yeah. And the big one more thing was sports story. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot there that I'm very interested in. There's like maybe like a handful of games. Uh, Pepper Drill, like definitely like at the top. Pepper Grinder. Pepper Grinder, yeah. I Googled Pepper Grinder to find a picture of it, and I just got a bunch of pictures of Pepper Grinder. Yeah. 
I did not like the last Indie World. So I am happier now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for the Indie World. Yes. I, I, I actually liked it. I think there's a lot there that I want to play, especially compared to the last one. I want to really quickly, uh, I guess we should thank some notifications real quick. Uh, Mecha Dragon X for 50 months. I almost forgot to use my Prime sub too. Thanks for doing it. I'm mm-hmm. glad I could remind you. And Kate, Caleb Fox, thanks for the five months. Have you all ever dabbled with 35 millimeter photography? I recently bought a rangefinder with some black and white film, and I'm excited as well as terrified to get my shots developed. Why terrified? I mean, with, you know, the classic with film, you don't know what you're taking until you get it back. So you don't know if it's going to be good or not. Let it be bad. Yeah. Just let it happen. You won't know until it's done. I do have a friend who still dabbles in 35 millimeter. Like he has like, it's just a regular point and shoot, but he like, he takes like film pictures. I've never gone and gone. I mean, I I don't want to say never, but not since like high school. Yeah. Have I gone and gotten film developed? Yeah. Except for like, uh, I got that like fuji instax printer and i printed a bunch of stuff but you can mm-hmm. print it from your phone so you literally take a picture of your phone and you print yeah. it on a polaroid that's pretty cool but uh yeah i've never done any film photography like no. really anyway uh real quick let's talk about Anbernic. yes they're uh, a company that makes a lot of portable emulators they make too many mm-hmm. last week we talked about uh retroid yes because they made the retroid pocket 3 and then they immediately made the retroid pocket 3 plus mm-hmm. Ambernick just made a fucking console <laughs> and they're making a whole nother one now that's i think just as cheap and uh it is directly competing with the retroid pocket 3 plus so retro dodo has an article here that says so here we are again introducing another new Ambernick handheld console this year This time, the RG505. They also have terrible names for these things. Just to catch you up, in 2022 alone, Ambernick has... So in 2022, this year, Ambernick has released RG300X, RG552, RG503, RG353P, and their portable gaming PC, the Win600. Oh, don't forget the RG353M, which we absolutely love, says Retro Dodo. We can say... So wait, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six things they released this year. And, and they're wonder, all basically the same. People thing. wonder why they don't take this stuff seriously. <laughs> yeah. I used to love Ambernick. Ambernick was my had my favorite portable emulator. Yeah. Uh, and then they just kept fucking releasing them. So <laughs> and I think one of the ones they released earlier this year was a dud. So I just abstained. Yeah. Also, like, I don't want to keep getting these because then my channel is just going to be a fucking Ambernick channel. No. I can't just keep getting them if there's, like, incremental updates. Anyway, what we can say is that at least Ambernick has seemed to return to their iconic console design of the RG351P and 351MP that made them one of the best on the scene. I don't know if that makes it better or worse, but let's wait to see what they go with it. It's not a terrible it's not terrible so far. Fingers crossed for a classic Ambernick masterpiece. This YouTube video also released recently and gives us a new look at the device. The fucking thing looks almost identical to a Retroid Pocket 3. I can't tell these things apart anymore. This it's just it's just a uh, a little taller. Yeah. I'm not going to put it on screen, but you can see it. You can barely see it. <laughs> but it looks like a Retroid Pocket 3. Yeah. Uh, the, I'll keep reading. But uh, as of the 14th of November, we have been gifted with the release of the RG505 promo video. This shows off the finished design alongside a first reveal uh, at the official specifications. The recent video focuses on a, ma- a few major features, which is different from their last video, which seems to focus on emulation performance and gameplay testing. You can view it here. It announced that it can play the best PSP games in two times native resolution, which is a big deal, uh, which is admittedly a great feature and one of uh, one that we are excited to put to the test in our upcoming review. Alongside that announcement, we are were shown that it will be using Android 12, blah, blah, blah. One of the favorite features uh, recently reviewed RG353M was the fact that it used new upgraded hall joysticks that's the magnetic joystick yes. that won't drift. 
For the video, it looks like the RG505 will also be using these high quality Hall joysticks. Um, I'm not gonna keep reading here. It's right. it's got a lot of cool shit on the inside. Uh, it can play. It should be able to play the best PS2 games and GameCube games. Mm -hmm. So that is a big deal. It's also competitively priced. I think it's one hundred and forty eight dollars, which is around the same as the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Right. And they did that on purpose. If the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus wasn't announced, they would have charged a lot more money for this. Yeah. Um, the only thing I saw on Twitter was that this thing, I think, has a Vita screen. Interesting. Which is why it might be a big deal. Yeah. I think a Vita OLED. People kept saying Vita screen, but I guess it's the OLED screen. Yeah, probably because like the second version of the Vita had an LCD screen. Nobody gave a shit about that. This article doesn't say anything about the Vita screen, right. but I'm pretty sure it has a Vita screen. Okay. And that's the only compelling thing about this. Right. I already pre-ordered the stupid Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, so I'm not going to get this. Mm -hmm. I, there's just too much shit going on. I don't want my goddamn channel to be a... I, I got other things I got to make videos Right. On. Um, so I'm not interested, but, uh, I'm, I'm just as mad as Amber Nick as a, I'm, a, I expect this type of behavior from Amber Nick because they released fucking what? Seven consoles yeah. this year. But, uh, it looks basically identical to the Retroid pocket. So, uh, except I think the D pad, where's the D pad in the Retroid pocket? uh yeah it's on the top okay so is that the same i think it's the same yeah it's the same it's okay. the fucking same thing okay hopefully the build quality is better though so i i mean that's just that's just where we are with these stupid uh portable emulators mm -hmm. they just they gotta stop they gotta slow down a little bit <coughs> anyway now we can talk about Street Fighter 6. Uh, Street Fighter 6 will have a new dynamic control scheme that makes button mashing effective. The option is all part of Capcom's efforts to make its forthcoming fighting game the most accessible yet. A few simple button taps is enough to have your uh, character perform all sorts of moves determined dynamically by the AI based on the character's position and situation. This option is in addition to modern controls and classic controls the former of which simplifies the number of buttons required to play the game. Yet while both of these control schemes are suitable for competitive play, the dynamic control scheme is explicitly meant to be close uh, to be close to an easy mode and is only available for local play. In a normal fighting game, when they mash buttons, they uh, just do a lot of whiffs, uh, says director Takayuki Nakayama. We wanted to we wanted something important and something that makes a difference uh, happen by randomly pressing buttons. No doubt some players will take umbrage at this new control scheme, but it's clear it allows anyone to simply pick up and play the game, no matter what their skill level or dexterity. I don't hate that. No. I think it's fine that it's uh, not available for competitive play. Yeah. Uh, I am curious how it actually acts. Yeah, that's that's what I'm interested in because, you know, they must have some AI program yeah. that, like, figures out what you're what you've been pressing plus like where you are on the screen you know to determine the best course of action for your character that time i mean the ai in smash brothers is insane yeah it's like really good mm -hmm. when you switch it to level nine it's very good yeah i've seen professionals lose yeah to, to, to so, smash brothers ai but it also like learns who it's fighting against it'll yeah. it'll, it'll start reading your attacks if you keep doing the same thing over and over again i'd be interested to try out because like you know i'll be honest I'm a button masher. I will mash buttons when I play fighting games. So if they finally have something that makes me good, especially a Street Fighter, which is not easy. I'd be... I'd assume that uh, if you're good at the game, you will be able to walk around the button mashing AI. You know? Yeah. But um, I also think that a lot of people probably aren't going to opt to use that if they're playing locally you know yeah I, I, look street fighter is a very dedicated hardcore fan base i'm sure 90 yeah. percent of the people are just gonna stick with classic mode yeah but um, even if, even people who are bad are gonna be like nah i don't i don't, don't want to be that bad yeah you know I mean? it's like <laughs> no I, yeah i know uh but i think it's it's an interesting inclusion i think yeah. as long as it's not available in online or competitive yeah i, I think, think that's I think they did the right thing there, yeah 
Anyway, uh, I'm a little interested in that game. When is it out? Uh, not soon. Uh, it's set to release next year. Okay. So that's it. Okay. I'm a little interested. Mm-hmm. I'm st- I am still want to play Guilty Gear Strive. I've heard that's good. I'm waiting yeah. for it to be on a Steam sale, but it has not. It, during Evo, they put a bunch of games on sale, and that one still wasn't yeah. on sale. Okay. Next is Mick Gordon. All right. So I'll try to summarize this because there's a lot that happened. He's the guy that did the Doom 2016 sound. Yes. Um... So shortly after the release of Doom, uh, the Doom Eternal OST um, and the wake of the game's launch in March 2020, players could tell us something was wrong. Back then, Mick Gordon declined to comment more than tell PC Gamer, I-, I take a lot of pride in my work. It's all I do. It's all I have and poured my heart and soul into. Now, in a lengthy post on Medium, Gordon alleges that the OST has been a subject of a lengthy legal back and forth between himself and representatives from id Software's parent company, ZeniMax. <laughs> Throughout the post, Gordon alleges significant crunch in the development of the game's soundtrack. Uh, he claims that he was asked to provide two level scores a month, and that uh, but that audio teams were reluctant to approve music as levels were rarely complete. Uh, with Doom Eternal soundtrack sticking closely to the player's actions, it was extremely difficult to continue to commit to audio until late in development. Gordon describes the months of overwork, exasperated by outright rejection of some of his scores, requiring four tracks instead of just two being provided the next month. By the time the game shipped, Gordon said that he had delivered more than double the minutes stated in the contract, wasn't paid for anything extra. It gets worse. Like I'll best, I'll try to summarize as best I can. They offered, uh, you could get the soundtrack as a pre-order bonus. If you pre-order the game, that was not part of his original contract because that's extra money. He would have gotten paid for it. Right. Um, he submitted stuff for it. Someone else who they got to mix the soundtrack got co-writing credit on all those songs, and they put a lot more songs on the soundtrack than they initially planned on, which Mick Gordon didn't get paid for. The uh, he he accuses the creative director of Doom Eternal, uh, Marty Stratton, of fostering a toxic work environment and like basically abusive behavior for ridiculous deadlines, demanding he get work done immediately. Um, Threatening him with like letting the uh, player base and the fans down by not doing this in time. Um, uh, I so I heard that there was a lot of problems with him and this soundtrack. Yeah, it sounded like they redid a lot of stuff. They basically they took everything he submitted and just basically mixed it all together. Uh, Mick Gordon alleges very poorly. <laughs> it. Sounds significantly worse than the 2016 soundtrack. Yeah. No, it definitely There's like is. some parts that sound like uh, Mick Gordon and some parts that, that I mean, don't. a lot of it that don't. Yeah. So uh, it was a little disappointing listening to this soundtrack compared to the 2016 soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, things were made worse when uh, Martin Strannon posted a Reddit post that accused Mick Gordon of basically not wanting to, you know, do the do the score properly and like blaming him for the way it sounds. Uh, Marty in his medium oh my post, God, that's a huge yeah. Post. In the medium post, Mick Gordon posted like all his email evidence to the contrary. He talked about how he actually had to ask Reddit directly to take it down because it was affecting his career. Mm-hmm. Um, they did, but it was up the next day because somebody at Zenimax got a hold of Reddit to put it back up. Um, it just seemed like it was a mess. And the reason why I want to put it talk about it here is because. Nobody's really talking about this. I see a lot of like articles written about it, but like the Doom soundtrack was like one of the most popular soundtracks in modern gaming. That's like one of the things people love about yeah. that series as it stands right now. And for the guy to who created that music to be treated this way and to not know his side of the story is a big shame. And I feel like more people need to know what happened. I feel like I don't know the whole situation, but when right. I first heard about him, like claiming that there was some creative disputes and that uh they didn't use a lot of his music mm-hmm. um i feel like there's just a lot of i feel like everyone's an asshole in this situation like yeah. mick gordon's probably a little bit of an asshole probably and the game director's a little bit of an asshole yeah. and there was some the big heads big egos and big conflict well i will say like they offered uh zenimax's lawyers offered mick gordon basically a hush money they said we will give you a six-figure deal 
take the money and just shut up about this. <laughs> Leave us alone. He said, no, that's not what I want. I want the Reddit post deleted and I want to redo the soundtrack properly. And they said, no, take the money and shut up. So he said, I'm not going to No, In that case, I'm not going to shut up. I'm going to tell my side of the story. That's good. Yeah. So good on him. I would like to hear his soundtrack. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure like there are, like you said, there's parts of it in Doom Eternal. Yeah. But it got mixed, you know, incredibly badly. Didn't something ha- Oh, it was the Destiny soundtrack. Yeah. Where like the original composer released it and it w- and then yeah. it got like copyright yeah. striked or whatever. I don't know. It's uh, it's a shame because even if uh I don't know who's in the wrong here. I, su- I again, I suspect everyone's an asshole in the situation. Yeah. But I would uh love to hear Mick Gordon's original soundtrack cuz yeah. I feel like it's going to be uh, no matter what he did. Yeah. It's going to be better than mm-hmm. whatever was finally released. Anyway, uh, Miyamoto addresses Switch successor backwards compatibility. Nintendo Switch currently offers a decent selection of uh, games and representative director Shigeru Miyamoto says backwards, backwards compatibility has become easier than before, but that doesn't mean Nintendo will focus on backwards compatibility when creating new hardware. In a God financial briefing it. on Wednesday, Miyamoto spoke about how backwards compatibility has become easier over time. Previously, software development for dedicated video game systems uh, was conducted in development environments dedicated to each plat- hardware platform. This meant that those environments could not be brought could not be brought forward when the hardware would change, and it uh, would become impossible to play software released from previous hardware without making changes. However, the software development environments have recently been gradually integrated, so generally speaking, it has become easier to implement an environment where software released for past hardware can now be played on new hardware. Uh, however, Miyamoto believes that Nintendo's strength lies in the creation of new games, not the preservation of old titles, which means the company won't focus on backwards compatibility when creating new hardware. Having said so, Nintendo's strength is in our creation of new entertainment. So when we release new hardware going forward, we plan to continue to offer new and unique gameplay that cannot be realized on existing hardware. So <clears throat> I understand this. When you're making new hardware, you want to make sure that you're going, you're 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 looking into the future and you're making the best that you can for the games that you're going to make for that system. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. But once you get all of that done and nailed down, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna wanna go back and make sure that you are able to play all of these older games too. Yeah, and Nintendo is so focused on polishing their shit that they're gonna just not if if they think that there's any problems with playing those retro games in a newer hardware, they're gonna just not let you do it. Yeah, like we- like having. Like a Wii U, some of those games need two screens. They're yeah. just like, fuck it. We won't even give you the option. Just forget it. But it's just... It's, or DS is a better example. Yeah, It sucks to hear this because we live in a world where backwards compatibility is standard. It's the norm. Every system does it. Every phone does it. Every computer does it. Every tablet does it. It's what you do. Things transfer over to the next thing you buy. Not everything, sure. There will always be some problems. But generally speaking, that's how it works. And Nintendo has a history of this. They've done this before. And here is them saying, we don't, we're not really going to do it right now. We don't think it's important. Well, they, they said that they're, they're thinking about it. At least it's on their radar. Right. Again, I think it makes sense when you're making new hardware to focus on how you can make the next generation of games as best as they could be. Uh-huh. Then you can focus on backwards compatibility. The way Microsoft does it, I think, is the best. Where they're like, here's all of the tools. Do whatever you want. We don't know if it's going to be perfect, but yeah. at least you could do it. Nintendo's not about that. Yeah. I have little faith that Nintendo will actually then go... After they make the new hardware, I have little faith that they'll then go back and make for good backwards yeah. compatibility. Okay. Two more articles. All right. Ash finally won. <laughs> I did see this. After 25 years of training, adventuring, and meeting new friends along the way, Ash Ketchum has finally achieved his lifelong dream of becoming the world's best Pokemon trainer in the latest episode of the anime Pokemon Ultimate Journeys the series. Ash beat Leon in the Pokemon World Coronation series, thus becoming the number one ranked trainer in the world. Yay. Good on you. So yeah, Ash, at the end of every season, (coughs) at the end of every season, Ash fights like a huge battle in the region or whatever. And in this 
he always loses yeah. every single time, which is insane because for 20 goddamn seasons, yeah. this guy that you're following is just a big, fat fucking loser. Yeah. And finally, he's won a Pokemon championship, which I think is a, is a great story. It is. At the same time, I'm like, him losing, I guess, is like part of the idea because like he sees that like winning battles is not the end all be all losing them is not the end of the world you can progress through loss and move on to the next journey right for him to win it's like okay now what <laughs> <laughs> well you can keep on winning you keep, keep on being the best i guess the whole story but there's always gonna be someone who comes along who's gonna be better than you there's a lot of there's people in the chat saying he cheated oh i don't know what the whole story is he won in alola but this was this one was different as he is now number one mm-hmm. i don't know uh wait this isn't a lola no this isn't a lola i don't understand uh also this is big spoilers because the dub <laughs> we're not <laughs> caught up with the dub whatever it was all over twitter yeah uh last thing superman fan game stolen this i saw also yeah uh i think we talked about this game on the show a while back uh T- uh, TLDR, uh, a Superman style fight experience. Oh, wait. Yeah, Superman uh, style fight experience can be downloaded on HIO. Uh, was created by Tyson Butler Boschema uh, and it was available Shima? for free. Boschema. Uh, however, a Steam user has exploited this, uploading the game to Steam and passing it off as their own game, charging about £10 for the demo. Uh, despite numerous complaints and reports, Steam is still allowing the game to be sold on storefronts. On top of this, the publisher Hero Game Studio is copyright striking Butler Boshima, uh, putting his YouTube channel at risk. So, that's shitty. Uh, yeah. So, this reminds me of things that happens with, uh, with music all the time, mm-hmm. where uh, it will... People will uh, make a song that's royalty-free, just yeah. like this was. Anybody can use it. People will make a song that's royalty free, and then uh, somebody will like take that same song, re-upload it, and copyright it, yeah. and then all of a sudden, there's DMCA requests all over the place. So, uh, yeah, it reminds me of that. It's a sh- it's just shitty situation. Obviously, he just needs to report it and get it taken down. But mm-hmm. it, it's 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 a bit of a process to get. Yeah, to especially happen. on Steam because they're notorious for like. You know, having a very hands-off approach to their own storefront, which sucks because it just means a lot of crap gets uploaded to it. Right. Right. All right. That's it for the news. Yay. Now it's time for the Tweet of the Week, which, uh, I mean, you know what? I can, Hold on. <laughs> All right. Just give me, uh, guys, it's a regular old show. Yeah. But, you know? Uh, oh, wait, shit. I have to do... <laughs> <laughs> I got to do this first. And then, the week, the week, the there you go. All right. There you go. Just like old times. Just like old times. All right. This one is by uh, Dean D A Carrier. The Carrier. It says started a band called Duvet. We only play covers. Ha. <laughs> interesting week for twitter <laughs> um all right now we'll talk to you guys yes quick. we start of course with people who left comments on last week's show uh over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf podcast oh, i don't have discord open i Fuck. do uh chris one three four thanks for the subscription here you start reading them i actually really have to pay all right you have a good time thank you good thing the bathroom is right over here How many you might even hear them yeah. Uh, oh my God! I don't have Discord at all. Hold on, I gotta freaking log in on the on the ETH, on the website. Uh, started hearing y'all on Spotify and been listening to some episodes at work. Y'all great. Been binging. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you also do your work though. You know what? Fuck them though. Fuck the establishment. I gotta log in using a code on my phone. How do I do that? Right here. Beep. Yes, log me in. Wow, really scraping for a tweet of the week? Shut up. Uh, Okay, I'm here now. Uh, What do I want? I want 
this. Okay. George McFarlane last week said, My mom bought an air fryer to make stuff like French fries, but after a month it was put on a shelf and never used again. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Our mother is in the market for an air fryer also specifically for French fries. Uh, I think it's good for drying out food. I'm interested in using it for vegetables. I have finally acquired the air fryer because... I live with Hannah now, and she has a fucking air fryer. Uh, Ray Danny, thanks for the nine months. I just said I've acquired an air fryer. Yes. I, uh, it's the day is, it's a big momentous day today. Uh, Mom, our mother, has an air fryer in her place in Florida, and she loves it so much she wants to get one for up here. Oh, my God. I yep. didn't know she actually got one. Yet. Yep. It's I'm happening. See, I'm interested to see how she's going to use it because she specifically wants to use it for stuff like fries. Yeah. But I want to know how she's going to use it for. You can use it for so much more than that. I know, but you ha- you got an oven for it. For yeah. the other stuff. But it's not an air fryer. <laughs> I wonder if soon people will just get rid of ovens. Uh, it, it's possible. Especially like if you have like a gas oven because people want to try to get rid of like gas ovens. It's just ovens huge. And, stuff. and yeah. like especially in an apartment. Yeah. Like fuck it. Uh, Bastion says the middle evolution is always trash. That's in quotes. Um, excuse me. Score Bunny turns into a disaffected teen in a track jacket. That's true. Yeah, he sucks. I mean, as a disaffected teen with a, who wore a hoodie back in the day, I feel seen. Uh, Sam says Will and Wood segment the non Nintendo podcast. Yo, we're still in that. Mika Bryant says, geez, guys, I skipped the leaks section only for Will to fumble a leaked image of the final evolution of the starter I'm picking. You didn't you don't show images. Yeah, I didn't show an image. And I'd done perfectly up till now, not getting spoiled, genuinely disappointed. That might have been me showing an image of the of the cat that I don't think was even real. Right. The reason I showed it was because I didn't think it was real at all. <laughs> so uh, you can only be mad at me if it ended up being real because I'm I'm 90% sure that was a fake. Anyway, the glow cloud. Bob, after tanking the credibility of Nintendo podcast with a which Pokemon would you fuck segment, the new Pokemon game looks like a GameCube herder. That's what the title of the last uh, episode yeah, yeah. was. Anything for that sweet clickbait, right, boys? Well, yeah. What can we do to? What can we do to make him more mad? Well, this week's episode's called uh, "Are the Game Awards Good or Something?" Are the Game Awards stupid? I feel like most people. How can we it. clickbait that worse? I know. I feel like most people think the Game Awards are stupid anyway. Yeah. We just have the balls to say it on the internet. What's wrong with which Pokemon would you fuck? What's wrong with that? Also, it was called Smasher Pass. Yeah. Calm down. Also, we're like clearly not gonna fuck these Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I don't know, man. People, don't, people got weird hangups. I don't know. Also, I think the new Pokemon game looks stupid. Looks it looks bad. Yeah. And then I was trying to find a GameCube game that it looked like, and it really doesn't look like <laughs> GameCube looks a lot worse than yeah the new Pokemon. But it still doesn't look that good. Uh. Anyway. All right, we're in the chat. Which Pokemon yeah. would you guys fuck? Yeah, let us know. Air fryers. Air frying also produces high temperature at a very rapid rate, thus making it extremely easy to burn food. And charred food may be carcinogenic. Carcinogenic. In addition, Kuzku? Kakuza adds, basically most devices cook one to three pounds of food at a time. It can be challenging to air fry meals for a large family. So it's a small thing. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. I mean, you're not, you know, you know, I wouldn't recommend air frying something for an entire family. Yeah. But like for two people, yeah, go nuts. Uh, Blue Dusk says, I copy pasted that from Google. Okay. And then Lord DC says, it sounds like some nerd shit. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, Bob completed his air fryer run any percent. <laughs> <laughs> I have probably three plus feet of snow coming my way in Buffalo this weekend. Oh, God. Is this supposed to snow? What snack should I stock up on to cope? Uh, Snickerdoodle Oreos. Snickerdoodle Oreos. Yes. 
No, get a lot of ramen. Yeah. It's the easiest thing. Canned soup, too. That's Canned soup is important. Yeah. Is it going to snow here? I hope not. It's already bad enough it's raining outside. I have to travel this weekend. Where are you going? It doesn't look like it's going to... I'm going to Pennsylvania. Mm. It doesn't look like it's uh, going to snow. So that's good. Okay. Sorry, Buffalo. We made it out. Mm. Uh, so I think these lights are good. I'm going to put them on the wall. There you go. And then I also got a backdrop, but it's just not here yet. It's not really a backdrop. It's like a cubicle wall. Maybe I'll just take this door off completely. So that then we don't have to like open yeah. it. You know, I'll just leave it open. There you go. Hopefully that won't affect the sound too much. Uh, I got. I already have doors in the garage. I'm going to have more doors for the garage. <laughs> um, Final verdict on the Snickerdoodle Oreos. I have a sealed packet in my room trying to decide on it. My final verdict is that they taste exactly like the cinnamon bun Oreos, and those are fucking awesome. Yeah, four stars. Check them out. Yeah, so I'm I'm down with it. Uh, Dab Queen, thanks for the raid. Yeah. Uh, anything else from you people? Anything? Anything you want to talk about? Kind of chance. Let Did I thank know. Ray Danny for the three months? Well, I appreciate it. Uh, there are Snickerdoodle Pop Tarts now. Ooh, oh, those gotta be good. Interesting. All right, well, guys, thanks for being here and hanging out with us. Thank live. you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at eight PM Eastern, right here on twitchtv slash If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Legend of Thief says your sliding doors are backwards. Good night. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. Uh, I was literally just in there setting all this stuff up. Uh, what did I want to say? Uh, I'm so confused. So is Genshin on the Switch. Maybe I misunderstood, but I thought Bob said it was. I didn't say it was. Uh, it is not on the Switch. Uh, oh, yeah, that's they right. They announced that it would come to the Switch, yeah. and then just that was years ago, yeah. and then they never did anything. Uh, we have a lot of work to do here uh, with this setup, mm -hmm. but it'll be nice. And yeah. I'm glad that uh, we got it to work out and we're going to do more of this. It's going to be great. Yep. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. I guess we should raid somebody yeah. who's on right now. Uh, I think Wood's on. Right? Yeah, yes. Wood's on. Go, you can watch. Is he playing? He's playing Among Us VR. What a loser. <laughs> hey, maybe that's VR game of the year. Maybe. Uh, go watch him, and we will see you later. I got a video coming out on Thursday. Oh, I want to do unboxings. Oh, I, well, I'll at, least, I'll at least show you this. Oh yeah, I saw that in your Open other it room. Up. Okay, Open it up real quick. It is the custom Xbox Elite Series Two that you got. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, ah, the there'll be a video. Are much smaller than I thought they'd be. The huh. What? The back paddles. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've never seen an Elite Controller I've at all? never seen an Elite wow. Controller in person. So that will be my video on Thursday. Okay. There will also be a Nintendo podcast, and that's it. It is heavy. It's a heavy boy. Yeah, it feels much heavier. I like it a lot. I mean, I, I would have loved one. I'm not buying you one. It's, it's <laughs> fucking, that costs $220 that you're holding right now. I know. I know. I'm just saying. It would have been nice. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you later. I have to walk over here and hit goodbye. Bye. Bye.